About three months ago, I decided I wanted to fully remake a game using Unreal Engine 5. And after 200 hours of working on this project so far, I am finally ready to show the progress I've made on remaking the original Fable from 2004. I hadn't used Unreal Engine in a few years, and I wanted to build my familiarity with how to use the engine best. I have made smaller projects before in the engine, but to learn UE5 well, I needed a larger, more complex project. I have just a few main goals for this project. First off, I want to make just a minimum viable product right now, also called an MVP. For this MVP, I'm going to fully remake the first hour of the game, including the Oakville Raid, Guild Training, Wasp Queen Quest, and Meeting Maze and Bower Stone. Second, I want to remove all load zones and make all regions connect seamlessly. In the original game, regions were very small and you would have to walk through a gate and wait through a loading zone to get to the next region. Another really cool thing is this allows you to see regions from other areas of the map. For instance, what if you could see the Heroes Guild from Bowerstone? Third, I want to make all of the systems in the game, including property management, shops, dialogue and quest systems, a day-night cycle, a basic alignment system, and combat. And for the combat, I want two basic swords, one standard bow, and two wheel skills, which are lightning and fireball. This is a lot to do, so I'm currently expecting the MVP to take at least 500 hours currently. Now how can I get access to the files of the game, such as meshes and textures? About a third of the time spent on this project so far was figuring out the best pipeline for getting environments from Fable into this project. I started with Fable the Lost Chapters. I can use a mod editor called Chocolate Box to get access to, meshes, to the meshes and textures, but they are stored as a .x file type, which is an old DirectX file type that holds a mesh's vertex, face, edge, and UV data. There's a lot to talk about with how I parse these .x files, but I'm going to glance over this as it won't be, have a major effect on the project in the near future, if ever. Uh, long story short, I made a simple program that would parse the data to a format that I could then put a custom script in Blender. This would create the mesh for me and auto UV it. There are some issues with this though, as I think the UV data in the .x file is garbage data, uh, but it allowed me to at least get a close UV and then I could just make corrections. The issue with this is there are so many assets I, that I don't have access to, and I would have to update the parser for everything in the .x file, including getting animations and adding multi-mesh compatibility. This process wasn't going to be fast enough, so I started looking to Fable Anniversary and how I could pull assets from that. Now, Fable Anniversary does have a mod editor as well, which is a modified version of Unreal Engine 3. However, it is a little broken and not friendly at all for new users. But with this, I found a way to export an entire level's layout, but I had to do a lot to figure out how to get everything at the highest quality. Turning off LODs in this modified engine is not easy at all, as it is in the normal UE3. Plus, I had to make sure all the textures were at the highest quality, regardless of distance when exporting. Once all these settings were applied, though, regions could be exported as OBJ files, and then imported to Unreal. Uh, well, everything except skeletal meshes, but we can come back to that. When I first started importing all of these files into Unreal, I put all the materials and textures in one folder. I did change this process, but I did it at first hoping that the files would reuse textures and materials. This did kind of work at first, but for some reason, normal and specular textures would get deleted and never replaced. So I then kept the materials for each region in the same folder as the meshes for that region. Once I did this, all the materials were still blank. Uh, this is because the material has an error that I had to correct it. Uh, we need to set all the textures to sRGB. After the editor unfreezes, after about 5 minutes, I then use a plugin to set the textures to the base color, specular, or normal properties of the material very quickly. This plugin is awesome by the way, and it's easily saved me over 50 hours for the regions I just have currently. And finally, we have a region that is fully textured in our editor. Mostly. Any object that had shaders are red, so I will need to fix those, but we, don't have to, we can worry about those later. Also, any transparent textures and materials will need to be adjusted by hand, uh, as you can see with these trees. Already, we can see the quality increase that the game is having, just by having moving it from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 5, but I have some plans to make the environment lighting even better, such as getting that distinct sky color that Fable has. Oh, we also have to flip the normals on the terrain. I don't really know why the terrain is exported facing the wrong way, but it does this when I import it to Unreal Engine, Blender, Maya, or Unity. Uh, at least it's an easy fix though in Unreal. Alright, to start with the collisions, I just added complex collisions to every mess. 
This is obviously a huge waste of resources, but it allowed me to start testing the environment. So I'll be correcting this shortly uh, by either removing collisions from objects entirely or simplifying collisions on objects. Uh, optimization of objects is in my backlog of tasks where I will properly reuse meshes, materials, and textures. Uh, once I do this, I will optimize the collisions afterwards. Uh, for now though, the frame rate is still really solid, uh, especially good enough to continue. Now, as I said, one of my biggest goals for this project is to remove all load zones where possible. So to do this, I need to merge the terrain for each region together. The issue here is the terrains are meshes. Uh, it is possible to convert a mesh to a height map, which can then be turned into a terrain. But there are a lot of issues that can crop up with this. Uh, there's just a lot of things and restrictions that you have to do to make sure this will work correctly. So I will keep the terrain as meshes for my proof of concept at least. I started merging these terrains together, which involved bending some of the verts together and removing overlapping areas. One really awesome thing that spawned from this that I'm glad worked as much as I had hoped is you can see other regions from a different region. Uh, so as I would assumed, it is pretty sweet to be able to see Bowerstone North Castle from the Heroes Guild. Another really cool thing is I have obvious places where I can build out the world, particularly here where I can add to the town between Bowerstone South and the warehouses. Now at this point I'd invested a total of about 160 hours in this remake and about 80 to 100 hours in engine. The risk of losing my project started to become substantial so I hooked up the project to source control. Everyone should set up version control on even side projects, particularly if you're going to be spending hundreds of hours on your project. While my personal favorite source control is plastic uh, because of how easy it is to manage branches in it, I went with Perforce for this specific uh, project just because of how simple it is to use with UE5. Now since I'd gotten the baseline work done for getting the project set up and at a base level of function for the environment, I really needed to organize my tasks that need done for the MVP. I don't think I have all the tasks I need on there as it is pretty easy to forget a couple of features you would need, but I have most of them at least. So I organize my task into what is most important and the type of category of task that it is. I also have a couple of really cool ideas for features I want to add add that weren't in the original game, but I'm leaving those off the MVP unless I just get bored and want a cool feature to work on that isn't on my backlog. Next I wanted to test lighting environments with Unreal, and the perfect environment to test this with is the interior of the Heroes Guild complex. I needed to light it anyways as it was dark and hard to navigate inside, so I started placing point lights and spotlights inside. The main window in Maze's quarters are really nice looking I think. This is also where I learned how to get the dynamic objects from Fable except the skeletal mesh objects. They were blank OBJ files if they are exported in the level layout, uh, but I can get the skeletal meshes individually. Uh, I just have to place them manually in the environment. Uh, so we'll do that later when we have animations working on importing, which I will talk about soon as well. Finally, I planted the terrain with a placeholder paint job. This is a restriction of using a mesh and painting in engine like you would with terrain. Uh, you can only paint a mesh with three textures in UE5. So I just wanted a layout of how I'd want the terrain to be officially painted uh, when the time comes to actually replace all of that. It was time well spent even if I have to fully replace all of it because it allowed me to figure out how I want to design the terrain paint at least and where I would want these types of different textures. Also it only took me three hours to paint all of the regions that I have currently uh, so that's not too bad. Now I really wanted to replace the standard Unreal Mannequin with the original Fable character model before I did this video, but I hit my first major roadblock when trying to do this. Uh, in Unreal Engine 5.0.3 there's a bug that prevents animations from being imported if the sample rate of the animation is a float value, such as 29.8 FPS. There are a couple of solutions for this, such as either importing animations into a UE4 first, or just fixing the bug in Unreal myself. Uh, as far as importing the animations in UE4, there are 785 animations for the main character alone. Uh, well, about only half of which are cutscenes. So I really don't want to risk wasting as much time as that could take if the process isn't as smooth as I would like. I do have a solution in the works for this right now though, so we'll see how that goes. Alright, so that's all the stuff I had finished already for the project, but what about the tasks that are coming up next? Well, the task I can't wait to do more than anything else right now is replace all these trees, rocks, and foliage in the project. Even if I fix the transparency of these trees, they are very outdated. Same with the rocks, we have such great rocks to use in Mega Scans with UE5. I also want to add a day-night system, a weather system, and set up a better skylight system. These three changes, along with the replacing of the rocks, trees, and foliage, will give a massive boost to the quality of the environments and visuals. We'll also still need to add dynamic objects to each region and get the skeletal meshes into each region, uh, not just the guild. Now that I would have all the meshes, materials, and textures in the MVP, 
uh, that I will need. I want to ensure that they are being reused rather than multiples of these objects being used. Let me explain. Every one of these trees is a different mesh. So not only could this waste resources, but it can make it more difficult to adjust regions and environments how I like. Same with the textures and materials. So going forward, I'll do this with each region as I bring it into the project. I also need to focus on optimization of regions that the user is not currently in. I want to create a system that knows which region should be loaded and unloaded depending on if the region can be visible from outside of that. I also want to deactivate as many objects as we can from those regions that we are not in but are still visible. So I could either make imposters for these objects or I could set it so if you see the guild, uh, you only see the gate and outside of the few of the buildings are visible. There are so many features to do even after these and I cannot wait to work on this project more. I plan to make an update video on my progress either every one month to two months uh, or after every major milestone is hit. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and y'all take care now.